Hello and welcome to GeoNo. Today I'm going to show you how to visualize contour or topographic maps in Google Earth. Now the reason I wanted to show you this video is because I think it's a good way to visualize exactly what these squiggly lines even represent. Now you may know that they represent elevation and it's a representation of a 3D space on a 2D surface which is an important thing to be able to do. But I wanted to show you since Google Earth has 3D topography what exactly it looks like when you drape these contours over a 3D surface and so you could get a better idea in your mind exactly what these contours represent. So that's what you can expect going forward. You'll see the little tour through Google Earth through a few locations with draped contour maps and then at the end I'm gonna have you test your knowledge to see how well you understand basic contour shapes. Alright let's go ahead and take a look at these three locations here in Google Earth. We're gonna start with Enchanted Rock. So all I'm gonna do is just double click on the thing I already have established if you need to search in the search bar for Enchanted Rock, you'll be able to find it really easily. So here we are. Let's take a look at it without the contour map draped over it first. So you'll notice it's just a few hilltops that are pretty rounded all together. And you'll be able to tell a little bit more what the map represents when it's draped on top. So let's go ahead and put it on. There's the map. So you'll notice again those bullseyes represent the tops of hills. And if I open up the properties, I can adjust the opacity. So you can see that beneath each one, it does indeed correspond to a hilltop below it. There you go. Maybe you can see a little bit better if I rotate it a bit. All right, so that is what Enchanted Rock Contour Map represents. Another thing we can do in Google Earth is we could get a topographic profile. So that's kind of what, what it would look like if you were going from point A to point B and you were just going to hike. What would you encounter? So let's go ahead and do that by adding a path and let's entitle it Enchanted Rock and then just click OK. Oh, I, actually, you can't just click OK. You have to draw your line and then click OK. So click on A and then click on B and it'll draw a line from those two points and you'll be able to now click OK and then right click on it to say Show Elevation Profile. All right. So if we're starting from the left side, we're on the top of a smaller hill. We go down into a small valley, we come up to the top of a little bit of a bigger hill, then we go down into a main valley, a bigger valley, and then come up to the main enchanted rock, which everyone goes and visits. And then you come down into a valley and then come back up to another little peak. And that's exactly what we would expect. So that is a topographic profile. And I have another video on how to create a topographic profile. If you'd like to watch that, go ahead and take a look in my videos, click the link that I'm showing now and you'll be able to find that video if you want to learn how to create topographic profiles manually. All right, let's go ahead and look at another location called Meteor Crater. So again, instead of a hilltop, this is a crater. And I wanted to show you the difference between the two things because they both look like bullseyes, but they are represented differently. So if we go ahead and drape our image, Click it on. Remember the tick marks mean that you're going down into a depression. And so you could you can look there. If it didn't have the tick marks, you would easily visualize in your mind that that was just a hilltop. But now you're not confused and you know it's a depression or a crater instead. Now if we want to get a topographic profile of that, we can go ahead and do that too. So go ahead and add a path. And we'll just call it Meteor Crater. Oh, I did the same thing again. So just remember you have to have your properties open to draw the line. So let's draw a line from the left to the right, just to get a good representation of our crater. And now we can click OK, right click on it, go to Show Elevation Profile, and just as we expected, sometimes Google Earth has some funny things happen, and that's just because the elevation data isn't entirely precise all of the time. But in general, it gives us a pretty good view of the topographic profile. So we have a pretty flat area, we go down into the crater, we come back up, and then we go back into the flat area. So that's Meteor Crater. Let's go to our last place, Capulin Volcano, which shows both things, a depression and a hilltop. So let's close out of our profile as well. So that's, that's what you could see. There's a typical volcano, which is a big steep hill, and then at the top you have a crater. Let's see what it looks like with the draped image on top of it. So you can see our contour lines representing an increase in elevation as you get to the top. You'll notice at the top of our hill we have two mini bullseyes. And let me show you why that is. If I open up the properties, I can decrease the opacity a bit. 
and we can look and see that there are indeed too many hills on top of the main hill. And that's what those little bullseyes represent. All right, and then once you get down into the crater, you've got tick marks just to show everybody that you're going down into a depression instead of a hilltop. All right, so again, we've got a little A to B line. So let's take a look at the profile there. We'll see if I can do it correctly this time. So we'll add our path, Capulin Volcano. And then before we close it out, we've got to click on A and then click on B to draw a line between the two points. Now we can click OK. Right click it, say show elevation profile. And again, it's got a little bit of a glitchiness to it just from Google Earth's uh, inaccuracy of elevation data. But in general, you go up, you go into the crater, you come out of the crater, and you go back down. All right, that's Capulin Mountain. Hopefully this has helped you. All right, it's time to test your knowledge and see how well you understand the idea of contours. So what I'm going to have you do is take the left column, which is a contour map, so you're kind of in an airplane looking down at the topography, and then you're going to match it up with the one that it belongs to on the right. So you're going to match up the numbers with the correct letter. So go ahead and pause the video and see if you can match up the correct letter with the correct number. All right, let's go ahead and go through these and just see how you did. So the first one, we know we have concentric circles getting smaller and smaller, kind of like a bullseye, but the peak is more on the right side. So that's gonna match best with letter C. Number two, we see we have two peaks. And so there's three different pictures that have two peaks. So we need to figure out which one matches best. Now you may notice that the right side has more contour lines. So there's one, two, three, four, five. So you went up higher in elevation than you did on this side. One, two, three, four contour lines. So you know your peak is going to be higher on the right than on the left. So the best match would be D. Now number three, you know, you'll notice these little tick marks mean that there's a crater or a depression at the top of the hill. And so the best match with that, you're going to have peaks that are equal on each side. So that best matches with A. Now number four, you've got a peak kind of to the left, and it's a little bit broad, so it best matches with E, probably one of the easier ones. Now the easiest one is probably number five. It's just a straight up bullseye right in the center, which best matches up with B. And then six, by process of deduction, is F, of course, but let's think about why that is. So if you go to your contours, you'll notice you have one, two, three, four, five contours on the left. So you went up a little bit higher than you did on the right, which you only went up one, two, three, four contours on the right. So you're going to have a higher peak on the left and a lower peak on the right. So hopefully you did well. I hope this helped you visualize contours a little bit better, and good luck to you. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions, any videos that you would like me to make, and please don't forget to subscribe, and thank you so much for watching.